Uh, thank you everybody for coming here. Thank you, ThoughtWorks and the organizers. Uh, my name is Agustin Ramos uh, Ansorena. I am uh, a creative technologist. I'm also an electronic artist. I uh, teach courses on creative coding at a master's degree in uh, Buenos Aires. And uh, I'm here to tell you that if you decided to become a creative technologist, then maybe I can help with that. Um, the th the, this talk is going to be organized in two, uh, three stages. One, I'm going to talk about only two very influential artists. I'm not sure because we have very little time. Um, uh, after that, we, we're going to see some of the development frameworks that are used uh, nowadays. And then also, uh, some at the end, use some useful production documents that you might need while uh, going out there and uh, setting up uh, an interactive installation for example. Um, so let's begin with the first uh, artist. So he's, uh, he's a, an American uh, artist, Saul Lewis, that, uh, that in the 60s, he had a, a very, he had an approach to creating art that we can very closely relate to, uh, to uh, how we think about uh, computing. Uh, he had a, a series of art, artworks called the wall drawings, right uh, where he conceived a set of rules or guidelines for creating this uh, the each one of the pieces here we can see a wall, the wall drawing 2000 and uh, 273 and here we can see uh, the instructions to create this artwork now if you if you if you read through through the through the instructions which they are kind of an algorithm uh, he, you can see that he intentionally is not is not clear about uh, certain certain aspects of the of the artwork. All right, that's 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 because his idea was that the his uh, his motto actually was that the idea of the artwork was uh, would surpass or be more important than the than the artwork itself. Uh, this means that uh, this becomes the idea, right? And the artwork, which could be, uh, which was performed by whoever was performing it, would be very different. So it would be like sort of like a digital uh, reproduction, but with the uh, randomness of whoever was performing or was creating the artwork itself. The algorithm in this case was kind of flexible. Um, he influenced a lot of people, a lot of artists. For example, uh, this. Uh, John Conway, Lillian Schwartz, Leonardo Solas, and Casey Rios, among a lot, a lot of other people. Um, I reckon when you look them up, they're very interesting artists. And uh, these artists also work with, uh, with concepts like, um, like uh, uh, cellular automata, um, autonomous agents, and rule-based simulations, which um, are also... Um, they work with the idea that both the artist and the computer work together to uh, create the final product. So the agency of the, uh, of the artwork uh, is a co-authoring between the algorithm and the artists. And the artist. Um, let's go to the other one, John Whitney. He was also an, um, um, an American artist. He actually coined the term computer CGI, which means computer generated imagery. And he worked at, at that time, it was very difficult to do this kind, of, uh, this kind of visuals. Why? Because the only computers available for doing this like flashy, very uh, performative things were military computers. And were not really, you shouldn't be using them to create like little, what, like colorful lines uh, for art. Um, uh, among, among others, um, we have uh, uh, like, uh, Norman McLaren, uh, Larry Cuba, and Cam Perling, who actually uh, wrote the uh, Perling noise algorithm. Um, they, work, they also work with oscilloscopes to create uh, their artwork. Even Sutherland, in uh, 1963, created this uh, the sketch pad, which actually, I don't know if you can see here very well, but he's using a pen to draw on the screen. Yes, that is a touch enabled, almost touch enabled device in the 19, in 1963. So, wow. <laughs> uh, 
um, he, uh, John Whitney then use, uses this to uh, create his, uh, his server, right? So here we can see John Whitney's tech stack. Uh, he uses an IBM 2250 graphics display unit where he would input with a light pen the parameters to an equation. Um, he would then see, this, uh, see the, the product of that um, and record that on a punch card that he would then feed back to the, to the machine and uh, with, a, with a film recorder attached to it, he would then record back the, all, all the sequence, all, all the frames that were recorded on the punch cards. Um, so there we go. We have two artists and we've seen some of the text out of the artists, but what is, what is being used right now, okay? Um, there, are, there are a lot of creative coding frameworks. These are some of them. Um, I feel bad about like, uh, mentioning some of them because they're a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. But uh, let's go with, do you recognize this? I don't know if you guys <laughs> have seen, have you ever fiddled with Logo Writer? The first version was by Simon Puppert uh, in 1967. And it was actually one of the first uh, publicly available softwares to uh, create graphics on the screen. Um, with a series of commands that would, you would input, right? And the lower side of the screen, the commands like uh, left 90, forward 50, and you could also do uh, loops and stuff. Um, Design My Numbers was a predecessor of processing. Processing is a widely, uh, widely used uh, creative framework. Um, this, and it was designed by the people, uh, by the team in John, uh, John Maeras, he's a very famous designer at the MIT lab. And I would, group, I would group that kind of coding, I would bluntly group that kind of uh, coding into the written coding, uh, written uh, frameworks, right? So we, we, can, we have processing here with the Java-based uh, framework. Uh, we have open frameworks with the C++ framework. Personally, I use open frameworks for, um, for professional work because it's more performatic. And this just uh, for my artistic work because it's more flexible and it lets you, it lets you experiment more. Um, but uh, in the creative coding world, you, don't, you not only have uh, actual lines of code, but you have boxes also. So this kind of frameworks, they're called nodal programming languages. Um, and they are languages that let you, they have boxes, right? Which represent variables, they represent functions, they represent signal generator, generators, they represent filters. And uh, you can connect them uh, together to make the, the final like algorithm. And uh, these frameworks are very useful in the sense that you can actually see uh, the flow of data uh, inside the, it's very easy to see the flow of data inside, uh, inside, the, um, inside the, the application. Um, I would recommend this when we have, you have to start, you have to um, teach people that never did before. You could start with one of these frameworks and then move on to coding. Um, Director and Macromedia uh, were the, ones, uh, the first ones that uh, introduced the idea of a canvas, uh, a timeline, and also coding at the same time. Uh, Scratch is also an other programming language for kids. I'm just gonna skim through it because it's a lot. Uh, Unity Game Engine is oriented towards, uh, uh, towards gaming. You can also have Unreal, you can have uh, Game Design, Game Designer was the other one? I can't remember. Um, Super Collider, well, this is for sound, to those, who, those of you who like sound. Um, it's, uh, it's very widely used for live coding. Um, and in Algo Raves, I know you, have, you know them. Um, Arduino and Raspberry Pi are uh, among one of the most widely used electronic prototyping platforms. There are hundreds of electronic <laughs> prototyping platforms. These are just two. Um, but uh, Arduino was very, it was very well, well received because it allowed for beginners and non-technical people to get introduced and start working with uh, sensors and uh, sensors in physical space in a, a, an, in a very non-technical way. Uh, 3JS and Paper.js are uh, frameworks for graphics, in online graphics in the web for 3D and to, for 2D. 
And then you also have online tools uh, to code GLSL shaders. GLSL uh, code is, co is code that is uh, com um, run on the GPU. So it's very performatic, but it's very mathematical. And Shader Toy and the Book of Shaders concentrate on, um, on, um, on fragment or pixel shaders, per pixel shader. Uh, Vertex Lab is, um, concentrates on vertex shaders, and um, I finished developing this on the Record Center, and um, it's online. You can, you, can try it. you can try it on. <laughs> um, okay, so now we know to, like, the software tools to use this, um, but what happens when you have to go out there and start designing or start to set up, the, for example, an artistic installation? There's a lot of things going on. I'm going to focus on some pre-production uh, planning that uh, documents that you might use. And um, I'm going to borrow something from Blair Neal. Blair Neal is a creative technologist that works at fakelab.tv. Um, uh, he wrote a lot of articles um, for creative technologies concerning this type of documentation. Um, so one of the things that you might want to do when uh, creating a, um, an interactive installation is do an interactivity script. What is this? Basically, it's an event, uh, an event dreamer graph where you say the user steps here, the software senses this, it gets uh, it, uh, something is updated on the database. It, uh, the user inputs this and so on, so on, so on, so on. These documents not, are not only useful for you, but are also useful for the team which is more important, so that the team knows what's happening all the time. Um, also, the wiring diagram. Okay, what, how are devices connected? Um, what computers are connected to which projector and to which uh, input device? Uh, what kind of connector does it have? And if you can add, this is not here, but if you can add what kind of uh, protocols uh, each connection or each, uh, yeah, each connection is using, that, that's, that's great. Uh, and also architectural floor plans. That will be sort of like the physical, lay, uh, the physical um, layer of the wiring diagram. That is, okay, um, where are the cables are gonna be la laid out? You cannot, design some, you cannot design, for example, a USB uh, cable layout if you know it's gonna, it's, it's gonna have more than five meters. In that case, for example, you might need a, a, a power, another power supply for the USB, but you, you can see that in the floor plans. And you also have make friends with architectures, with architects, which is really good. Uh, and so with all this, you can do a lot of very interesting things. These are some of the studios that I, um, that I, um, that I, I really, that I really like, and that I most admire, and there are studios that work with light in immersive installations. They work with uh, web thing, uh, web web based applications. They also uh, some artists that work with biotechnology also. And um, so, after what we've seen already, then what is a creative technologist basically? Right? <laughs> it's difficult. It's actually a very <laughs> undefined term. A creative technology, uh, it's sort of like an umbrella term to define someone that is a very good generalist at sort of like a lot of coding areas. A creative technologist can be a full stack web developer that does uh, graphics online. It could be someone that cr uh, works with physical computing and, uh, and sensors. It can also be um, someone that works with uh, a, a virtual reality, augmented reality, and knows how to code stuff in Unity, for example. It's, it's very big, but the idea is that you are a good, uh, very good generalist and you know how to, uh, how to learn uh, different frameworks and different approaches to, uh, to competing uh, very quickly. Um, so if you are interested and you wanna become a creative technologist, uh, along with some, uh, rec uh, some recurses here and, um, and, and speakers, we are organizing a computer arts workshop in Munich. Uh, that's gonna be held in August and September. So if you're interested, it's gonna be a seven day intensive workshop that we're gonna go through some of these frameworks and see if we can come up with some sort of prototype, artistic prototype for your ideas. So if you're interested, 
ping us up. And thank you very much.